Hello, most excellent human. Welcome to another week on our journey through the artist's way. So let's take a moment to reflect on how was this past week for you? How many days did you do your morning pages? You can be honest. It's not a, not a quiz. Um, and what was your artist date like? Did you have a dedicated artist date? So um, my goal here is to kind of give you a touch point so that you know that you're not alone and that there is a whole group of us working on this together and to give you some of the highlights um, from our live story groups. So as I've mentioned in the past, the artist dates um, were we were finding some resistance to those in the groups and something that came up this past week was um you know not everyone's getting like a dedicated hour or um even a dedicated time right like you know i've got a single mom that doesn't doesn't have a lot of downtime for herself and so you know these things happen someone else mentioned that um, they were doing like 15 minutes before bed every night as just a little, a little creative playtime. And so again, just here to remind you, do what works for you, get in what you can fit in and that's okay. Um, also another reminder that the, your artist date, it doesn't have to be about you creating really the, the theory behind the artist date is for you to refill your creative cup. So even if it's just, um, you know, whatever you can do to kind of take in some, some beautiful creative energy, it doesn't necessarily have to be outputting and painting or drawing or whatever. So there's that. Um, and coming back to the morning pages, we, as a group, definitely had um, a few of us that were struggling with the morning pages this past week. So that could be for a number of reasons. But um, speaking of synchronicities, like last week, one thing that I found interesting once we started reading through chapter four was that there is a little bit of a deep dive into the morning pages and a little bit more of the logic behind them. Um, so I think I noticed like it, it, the uh, week four reading material starts with this blanket statement of okay, right? A lot of times we are using the term okay and that's a very like basic surface level, very, very like largely encompassing so many things. And so I've been challenging myself to move past okay so in times where i say okay or where i'm about to say okay to pause and replace it with a more descriptive word because you are worthy of being so much more than okay right like you're you're so much bigger than that so that's something that i've been exploring and so along those same lines as it relates back to the morning pages i know myself i've personally found that the first couple weeks seem to be very like surface level like this is what I'm doing today you know this is kind of what's going on you know really kind of basic like not getting too deep into anything and I've noticed over the past week that just like with this this concept of okay that my morning pages have kind of like we've we've unpeeled the onion back and we've gone to a feel like a deeper level when I'm writing and that could be circumstantial with just what's happening in my own personal life or it could just be part of the practice right that, that now that I've gotten into it I've I'm able to go a little bit deeper and that's kind of what the author speaks about in these morning pages and especially maybe at this time as we're getting into week four why we might be sensing some resistance or some hesitation or not doing the morning pages because um, there's a pattern there, right? Like we, as we start getting deeper, as we start realizing a little bit more of what's really happening in here, uh, that can be uncomfortable, that can be challenging, that can make us recognize the profound need to change. And change is not always easy. It's it's usually not easy. Um, so 
that can be something that comes up with these these morning pages and so just here to support you and encourage you to keep going and um it's not going to be perfect right like we i always say this but imperfect action is better than no action so even if you haven't done them for a week or two weeks or whatever like today is the perfect time to start again whether it's morning or not it doesn't matter so just start brain draining um something to something to paper right we've talked about whether it's actual text or whether you're just thinking and kind of like moving your hand and drawing scribbles like it's the act of letting what's up here flow out onto a page in some form or fashion so um there's that there's also the talk about these kriyas um which i'm not sure if i said that right because i do not know sanskrit but when something happens that causes you to acknowledge what's going on so I see this happen all the time in real life with people that I know, with my clients, like if we are not paying attention to something that is begging for our attention and we keep ignoring it, we keep repressing it, we keep just like shoving that back in, um, it's going to find a different way out. And usually I see this happen a lot with like physical injuries or accidents or just something It's like pay attention like if you're not going to take the time to pay attention to this now um typically something comes along that forces us to pay attention to it so i thought that was um interesting right and how the morning pages can kind of help us navigate that and hopefully bring into our awareness these things that need our attention before we hit that wall right before we hurt ourselves or before something pops out in an unpleasant place to tell us hey it's time for you to focus on this so there was that and with that we get into hey it's media deprivation week so i'm actually currently working from the 10th anniversary edition of the book uh, which calls it reading deprivation week but someone in the group was so kind to consult the google all-knowing oracle and apparently in about 2012 uh, Julia Cameron said, actually, considering the world that we live in now, consider it media deprivation week. And so for this next week, the ultimate goal, right? The, um, if we're following everything to a T, it's no media. So no reading the paper, no reading the news, watching the news, reading your books, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, like reading blogs, no social media, um, I don't know, like no whatever other apps, connections, um, things that you do to fill your time. You're supposed to dump all that out the window, right? Because what we don't realize is that we are consistently, constantly being bombarded by messages all day every day right like the radio's on you walk in somewhere the tv is on like your phone is constantly beeping with notifications and news stories and then when we're not getting bombarded by messages we come home and we're like okay well i'm gonna read a book now or i'm gonna zone out and watch a movie or i'm going to listen to this podcast um and so what the point i believe of this week is is to kind of like help us like come back to this homeostasis, this baseline of no outside influences. So this is going to look a little bit different for everybody. Um, and be kind to yourself. Obviously, if you have a job and you need to stay gainfully employed, like do what you need to do to keep your job right and to do, do your work well. Um, I know for myself as a parent, um, I do the bedtime routine and we read books every night. I'm not gonna not read to my kid. Um, there's, there's definitely things that you can let go. There's gonna be things you don't wanna let go, um, but you can, those are the ones to pay attention to. And there's gonna be some things that just, the way that your life is structured, you're, you're not able to. But I think the point of this exercise is to really put some thought into like, what can I cut out for this week? Um, you know, 
what if I don't do this, will my world keep spinning? Um, and so with that in mind, do the best you can. It's, this is, this is your path and your road to travel in a way that feels comfortable to you. So I encourage you to get a little uncomfortable because, right, that's our growth edge. That's where the magic happens. But don't, you know, you don't have to isolate yourself for a week from everyone and everything that you know. So that's going to look different for everybody. I know some of the folks that had gone through the artist way before and were coming back for another round said that this was one of the most challenging, but also one of the most rewarding and amazing weeks. And so I definitely encourage you to find your own groove and, and do the best you can, right? And I mean, some of these things are habitual, right? Especially like for, I'm finding the things that I check on my phone where like my fingers just go to these places. So notice that. And I think if anything else, like when you feel that like urge to go check the news or just you know, check Instagram or whatever it is, like notice, hey, what am I doing right now? Do I really need to do this right now? And I think the whole point of the week is to just be more mindful about our consumption, right? And to create more that we consume. So a lot of times I hear, since I'm a parent of a young child, that, you know, let your kids be bored right? Like just let them be bored because that's when their imagination takes off. That's when, when you're alone with your thoughts, when you're alone with yourself, that's when you can hear yourself instead of everybody else. So find ways to cut out the media um, that will work for you. And if you slip, that's totally okay. We got your back. Um, and do the best you can. So we decided as a group that we're keeping our Slack chat. So if you need some extra encouragement there, just want to talk about like what's going on for you, then totally do that. One thing that I thought that I would do, but haven't yet is to change the like lock screen on my phone with a note, um, either, you know, you don't need this right now, or maybe a list of other things that I could be doing. Um, one other thing that I thought might be really cool for an artist date this week for those that are able or interested would be to do some sensory deprivation. So if you have a float tank place near you that is safe to go to, that might be cool. That just kind of ties into this media deprivation week. If you don't know what they are, check them out. They're pretty dope. Um, just getting this little pod full of salt water and basically no lights, no sound no sight, it's pitch black, no taste, and you shouldn't even be able to feel because they have the so much salt and the water at the same like body temperature, so you should just be like floating in a void. Try that out. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, all the things that have been on your to-do list that you haven't been doing, especially taxes, this is a great week to do that, right? Because I think the easiest things or the least necessary things probably at the very bare minimum, right, are social media and Netflix, like watching shows. I don't know. That's, that's what it is for me. So those are the two that are like, obviously I'm resistant to giving up. Like I felt totally blindsided by this. Like, oh my gosh, I should have scheduled content if I would have known. But also I've been talking about divine timing and how everything comes in right when we need it. And so I've got to walk my talk. And I was like, nope, I guess I'm just logging out. Um, suffice to say that my finger has definitely, like I said, like just gone to Instagram because it's a habit. And then I'm like, oh no, oh no, no, no. So that's where we're at. Um, let us know how it's going for you. Definitely thinking about you, holding space as you are going on this journey with us. And uh, we'll see you next week.